Hello. This video is part of a series of videos on making CAM in the Bechtel Center at Purdue. Last video, we covered, we, we covered making our first setup, currently shown right down here. Now, in this video, we're going to cover probing and the simulation engine that's built into Fusion. So probing is important because in the, in the CAM world, in the Fusion world, we can make things basically as precise as we want them to. We can say that this part is going to be exactly centered. And in the real world, that's kind of hard to do. Can you send, I probably, if you give me a chunk of stock, I probably couldn't center a device to a hundredth of an inch, a thousandth of an inch. That's gonna be pretty hard. But if we don't do that, then all of our, that all of our features will be shifted over by that little amount. And that's not a good thing. In order to fix that, we do something called probing, where we, we put it in pretty close to the correct position, and the machine goes and brings in a probe, and it goes and says, ah, actually the whole stock is shifted over 0 0.01 inches. So I'm just going to shift everything else over 0 0.01 inches, and then just go off of that. Great. In order to add our first probing operation, we can go to setup, probe WCS. And then you can go, and then at this point, I'd like to explain a brief thing about Fusion's operations. So every operation you add in Fusion, whether it's a probing or a facing or a 3D adaptive, we'll have a couple of tabs up here. The first tab is the tool. This will determine which tool you're using and how fast that tool is moving and other things like that. Next tab is geometry. This is telling it what part of the model you actually want to do stuff to. In the case of probing, it's going to be, hey, which, which face do you want me to probe off of? If you're doing something like facing, it'll be, hey, which parts of the model do you want me to face? And stuff like that. Height is going to be a couple of settings that it's going to say, hey, here's where it's safe, here's where it's safe to be uh, above the stock, and you, you're above the stock, you're not going to crash into anything. You can move as fast as you'd like. And then there's somewhere like, hey, so start machining at the top here, and then go down to here. Heights, heights manages all of that. And the last tab, we have the WCS. Uh, in other tabs, this is a place with a passes and a linking tab. And but because probing is a little bit weird, it doesn't have that. Cool. Let's just go through and set up our probe for our tool. Because we're using the VF2 or the VF4, we can go down and select the library for the VF2 and VF4. And then we can go and select our probe when it loads. There we go. And you can see that it auto-populated some feeds and speeds here. And you can just leave these at default for now. Next tab is geometry. And this specifies what we're going to probe. First probing operation that I like to do is a Z probe, which is where the probe comes down, touches something vertically, and then goes back up. And I like to do this first because it is, um, a, lot, it is a lot simpler than an XY probe. And if your Z surface is wrong, then your XY surface is also going to be wrong. But if your XY surface is wrong, then your Z surface might still work just fine. Uh, the two main ways to, um, probe, to probe your Z are to probe off your stock or to probe off your vices. Probing off the, off, off the stock is better when you know the exact size of your stock and you are not machining very close to the vices. So you can imagine that if your stock is a little bit shorter, then you go down, you probe, and it says, OK, this, this stock is a little bit lower than we really think it should be. Uh, maybe so like a, a tenth of an inch lower. So I'm going to compensate for that by moving everything a tenth of an inch lower. And that might be fine if you have lots of clearance from the, from the jaws, but we don't really have that much clearance. So if everything gets moved a tenth of an inch lower, we might collide with the jaws, and that's not good. The way to fix this is to probe off of the jaws. So instead of coming down and poking the top of our stock, we'll come down and poke the, and poke the jaws. And the jaws don't go anywhere. We know where the jaws are. But what this will do is it will mean that even if our stock is a little bit too tall or a little bit too short, that means that our first facing pass is just going to be a little bit weird. After that first facing pass, we, the height, the top of the stock is going to be exactly a certain distance above the top of the jaws. And that is what we want in this case because it means that the bottom of our model will never move any lower. So we're not going to get any closer to the devices than we already are. So to do that, I'm just going to select the top face of one of these jaws 
and it says actual rectangular by default, you can just change this to Z surface. You can see it's going to come down, poke the, poke the jaws, and then go right back up. Then in this next tab, you can just leave these all at default. They're fine. And then finally, we need to go and override our driving WCS. And what the and this needs to be set to two. This is very important. And I believe, yep, it even says so. Probe WCS override number two. Please make sure you do this. Excellent. Now that that's done, we need to go and set up our XY probing. And we can create this in much the same way. You go to setup, probe WCS. And you can see that our probe is already selected from the previous operation. You can go to geometry. And in this case, uh, we can go and select the top, of, the top of our stock, and it'll go and do a default XY probing for us. The reason we don't need to do vice probing here is because we're not really close to anything left or right, just up and down. Cool. And it said clear heights are just fine. And we need to go and override a driving WCS to two. Excellent. Now if we press OK, we're ready to go and simulate this and see how it will look. So to do that, go to go to your setup so it simulates the entire thing at once. Go to Actions, Simulate. And this will pull up the simulation engine. And this will allow us to see everything that is happening with our, with our tool and our part and everything before we actually put it on the machine. So if there's anything bad that happens, like a collision or machining to the devices, or even just machining the wrong thing, you can find out about it before you go and ruin some expensive parts. Some, some features of the simulation engine. Uh, the important ones are stock. You want to, if this is off, you want to turn it on because this is the main thing we're looking at. We're looking at our stock and seeing how that, how that changes. There's a couple different forms of colorization. I like comparison because it shows us which parts are ready to, which parts are already at their final dimension, which parts still need more to be taken off, and which parts have too much machined away already. So in this case, if I move this, you can see that there is red is negative, um, green is good, and blue is positive. So you can see green down here, that is already where everything needs to be. We don't need to remove any, material from, any more material from the green section. But we do need to remove material from this blue section, which makes sense because we haven't machined our part yet. The next thing down here is the accuracy. Uh, the higher up you turn this, the more effort Fusion is going to put into resolving circular features and all the and basically increasing the accuracy of your of your part in simulation. The downside is that if you don't have a very powerful computer, it will make your um, increasing this accuracy above low, which is what I have it on right now, will make your computer not have a good day. And the final one is uh, stop on collision. I think this is very important because if a collision happens, yeah, Fusion will turn the tool red. But if you're simulating a half hour operation, you might be simulating it very quickly. And that brief flash of red, you might just miss. So by stopping a collision, you make it so that you have to go and look at every collision. It's, and every collision is important. Cool. And then down here, we have our, our playback speed slider. This is very fast. This is pretty slow. This is stopped. This is pretty slow backwards, and this is very fast backwards. I'm going to set it to about there for now. And then we have our play pause button. Let's play this, and let's see what the machine is going to do. It's actually a little bit fast. Let me slow it down a little bit. So you can see that the probe is going to go and move down. And it's going to come down. And it's just going to go and poke the top of the jaws, and it's going to go, go right back up. Excellent, nothing fancy. Now for the next operation, you see it's going to come over here and it's going to go and go sideways because it's doing the XY probe. Right. So what just happened there is a fake probing collision. And even if collisions you think are fake, you should investigate them every time. And the reason that probing generates fake collisions is because the probe has to crash into the part for the probe to work. And that's really weird in machining. So sometimes Fusion will throw up extra errors. And you thought this one is really weird because even though I have stop on collision turned on, Fusion did not stop. 
Nobody can tell it's a fake collision. So if you go and you'll zoom in, and you'll see that the probe is just barely touching the surface. If the probe was inside the surface, like if the probe was coming down here, then you, se you selected something wrong, and you need to go back and reselect your probes. In this case, because the probe is just barely touching, we're good, and we can carry on. Cool. This is going to go down, and it's going to go and touch the other side. And then it's going to come and touch the left and right. And with that, the simulation is complete. Once you add some more operations in here, you can see them. You can see them all simulated, and you can also see the path that the cutter is going to take and what the final shape of your part should look like once the machine is done cutting. Excellent. You now should have all the tools that you need to go and make the rest of this cam. Uh, remember that if you ever get stuck, the Bechtel, you can come into the Bechtel Center, and a peer mentor will be happy to assist you. But other than that, good luck.